Should we buy or sell clear water paper? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. And do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So I have a theme under the other themes that I call industrial materials. So you do have clear water paper here. They are unsurprisingly in the paper business. 31% here from the 52 week low, minus 26% away from the highs. So here is their website, trusted products that are essential in everyday life. Yeah, here you can see it's used also for those uh, Chinese meals, uh, tissue paper, um, yeah, okay, so yeah, it seems like um, they have, you know, uh, uh, a broad range of customers and uh, that is, you know, uh, beneficial. Uh, let's jump into the charts. Uh, so these are weekly data points and this is, you know, big, big picture. So this is a very interesting stock because it's one of those that um, has its own uh, life, so to speak, uh, because we did not have, you know, a bear market in 2015, you know, in the S&P 500, but this one was like, okay, I'm going to go down, yeah, minus 58%. Yeah, we did not have um, a bear market in 2019, but then Clearwater Paper went like, well, I'm going to have, yeah, I'm going to have like a max, you know, 65-ish bear market, 65%, that is. So, this is a very interesting stock. Uh, you can use it in you know a long short uh, portfolio because it's obvi it obviously behaves uh, very differently from you know what you know yeah let's say the s p 500 Th that one looks very different okay so what's currently happening is that uh, we have something that is time cycle ish yeah uh, but the, the time cycles have not been that clean but it's it's uh, it's one of those stocks that moves up and down in rhythms uh looking at you know these weekly uh data points you know a challenge for the bulls is that uh they are currently contending with some key horizontal resistance uh, levels so we we are in a very noisy zone here on the weeklies uh, when we go here to the daily data points, that's when it gets, you know, especially interesting and we get that trigger a level. So let's uh, do some history lessons here. So now we have gone way back here to 2014. And something you can see is that the red 200 daily moving average, it's very important. Uh, the bulls, uh, they used it back here, you know, to buy and participate in this rally. But as you see, uh, the bears also use that as a level to short. So look at the 200 daily moving average in red here. This is this is where we rega regain support and what happens, you get a very nice bull rally. We get below it, bears get uh, very aggressive. Uh, and you can see here as well, uh, support and we do get a rally, but when we lose it, uh, that is when the bears go wild. So it's obviously is a very important moving average uh, and the interaction here between price and said moving average is far beyond random. So the reason why this is very important right here and right now is because we have a declining 200 daily moving average here, it becomes resistance, resistance becomes support, big rally, currently. So the current narrative, okay, wrong color. It is a resistance level, a very surgical resistance here. And last week we failed as we approached that very important moving average. As long as this moving average offers resistance, then technically speaking, this is a bearish setup. Similar to how you buy 200 daily moving average support in a bull market, uh, you short uh, 200 daily moving average resistance in a bear market. So yeah, this is just textbook bearish setup as long as this indicator offers resistance. On the RSI and PPO, we are a bit in the noisy territory on the weeklies. 
on the dailies, we do see that the recent, um, you know, timid, timidness from the bull, from the bulls it started once once we tested the upper end of the RSI. Also, the PPOs are stretched, but they are not at like extreme levels. So um, the key event now is that we have two hundred DMA resistance. That is just the key thing. So technically speaking, I will give this one um, a minus uh, four. As long as uh, the bulls are not able to get above this uh, important resistance level, then um, yeah, uh, the bearish uh, line in the sand will be in play. Let's look at the seasonality for the stock. So looking here to the right, it's a bit messy because we usually see some weakness here leading into the later part of May. But then we see strength in June. Uh, looking to the left over the last five years here, yeah, we do see that classical May weakness, but then June and July are strong. And uh, then over the last 10 years, uh, then the seasonality is, you know, improving from April peaking around July. Uh, so that's interesting uh, because it's a trend. Over the last 15 years, then we do see that May is, it, it closes higher 43% of the time. Uh, but June, and especially July, is very, very strong. Uh, so in this case, uh, the seasonality here is definitively very much interesting, in the sense that there is a trend. Uh, it gets more stronger and stronger here towards uh, July. Um, uh, the caveat is that the current month, you know, which obviously is most relevant uh, right here and right now, that is May. And May was a bit messy. So, I, so the, it was overall bullish, but I think I will give this one, yeah, I give it a three. Yeah, I could, um, well, I definitively would have given this one a lot higher score on seasonality if we currently were in, say, June. But we are, we are not, you know, we have to trade what is right in front of us. Okay, so uh, Saks has a number to buy on Clearwater paper. A value, A growth, B momentum, industry rank, top 24%. Uh, paper and related products, obviously these are very good scores. Market cap, 557 million US dollars. Then what are the insiders doing? They are... Selling! Okay, so they are selling. Okay, so, so that's interesting. So, Saks is, is feeling very bullish, but the insiders, yeah, and they know uh, a lot more about the company than Saks do. Yeah, there's a very big discrepancy, to say the least. Uh, if we go here to consensus estimates, yeah, we only have three analysts uh, covering the stock. 14% upside price, tar price target, highest is 21% above, and the lowest is 6% uh, above. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you, you see here that a lot of these price targets are from 2021. We do have one that is a bit recent for, for this year. Uh, this is from February. Uh, and this was a, a cut, you know, so the price target was cut to $35 uh, from 50 Okay. Okay, so this, this one is a bit messy because Saks was like reeling like, wow, amazing times for Clearwater paper. But uh, the, the most recent price target is obviously most relevant. That one was very lukewarm. It basically means that you know, the stock is currently, you know, fair value. Um, when we looked at um, you know, what the insiders are doing, they are selling. So I do think I will give this one here to the bears. Um, I think I give the bears a minus three. So uh, we do have a 61% correlation with the S&P 500. 57% uh, here with XLB, which is the basic materials uh, ETF. 56% uh, here with uh, the uh, the 
forest and wood ETF. And then we have minus 57% with the dollar index. Daily data points, 54% S&P 500, 14% XLB, minus 39% with wood ETF, then minus 62% here with the dollar index. We're looking short and the long term, yeah, the strongest correlation we do get here was with the dollar index. So let's have a bit of a look here at what is happening with the dollar index. So we look here at the futures. Uh, so the dollar, it's been on an absolute rampage. Uh, so um, it, it, it has broken out throughout the, through this, uh, this cluster of horizontal uh, resistance levels. So let me just draw them in. So around here, you had this cluster of uh, all kinds of resistance levels, but when we powered through them, uh, the bulls really got a lot of momentum. So yeah, we have seen a very strong move here in the dollar, uh, looking at you know, the PPOs and the RSI, we are at very extreme levels. Daily data points, yeah, same, same, same here as well. Bulls are obviously in control. But when we look at the history of this chart, and we have, we have RSI data here going way back. So let's look a bit at it. Okay. So we have data all the way back here into 1986. Okay. The current readings are obviously very rare. Could we go higher before we have a pullback? Sure. It's possible, but this is a very excessive move. It just is the prior times where we have had similar moves. And the bulls thought that, oh, it's going to the moon. Well, it usually didn't work out. So yeah, this looks interesting from a more speculative bearish perspective. Uh, given that there is a negative correlation between the dollar index and clear water paper, it means that if we do get a pullback in the dollar index, that would then be likely positive for clear water paper. So that's, that's, uh, you know, something to think about. Uh, when looking at, you know, a relationship between securities where there is a neg negative correlation, it can become a bit confusing. So I think I will look now at a clear water paper against, um, the S and P 500 uh, to avoid it out because it can, can get very like uh, it becomes a lot of mental gymnastics. Okay. So here is the relationship and, um, uh, interesting, very interesting indeed. So we have gone through a period of, um, outperformance and then we had a period of underperformance. Now it looks a bit, uh, consolidation ish. Hmm. That's interesting. That's a trend change. Uh, what I don't like is that uh, the recent uh, low, let me draw it in, uh, this low is lower than this. Um, if, they, if, they, if, the, if this low was more on a similar level to the prior low, then I would feel more bullish. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's a bit unfortunate that we got this um, deeper pullback so, uh, that, so recently. Looking at RSI, we are systematically bouncing from, um, you know, at least uh, ever since uh, 2019, it seems like this low end of RSI is uh, relatively viable, but we have already seen a bit of a move. Uh, based on the history, there could be a bit more, more left, but um, yeah, we, the trend is a bit clear. Let's look at the seasonality. Yeah, so yeah, over the last 10 years in red, um, seven years in blue and five years in green. So over the last five years in green, we usually see Clearwater outperform the S&P 500 towards uh, late June, but, uh, over the, over the last 10 and seven years, we usually see underperformance. Hmm. Yeah. So I do think uh, I will give uh, the bulls, um, yeah, I think they've earned a four on this one. This was interesting. Um, so we now get a bit of a messy situation where um, the score becomes zero. So it's, it's a very either or at this point. But the great thing is that we have a trigger event. 
the line in the sand is 200 daily moving average resistance. We have some bearish data on the technicals and the fundamentals, bullish on seasonality and relative performance. As long as the 200 daily moving average resistance offers resistance, then uh, it makes sense to continue shorting or using other bearish strategies on clear water paper. Based on history, we have we did see that you know the bear well the pullbacks can be very substantial and very profitable for the bears. But there's a big but. If the bulls are able to reclaim the 200 daily moving average, then um, the bullish data we found uh, could play itself out uh, significantly. Also, if we do reclaim the 200 daily moving average, then the minus four here on the technicals obviously is not going to be relevant. It's not going to be that relevant anymore. So yeah, uh, the great thing is here with clear water paper, it is very tradable. Key line in the sand, uh, and it's a security that moves big. So a lot of interesting opportunities for both bulls and bears going forward.